Hi, I'm Tina McIntyre, Florida Friendly Landscaping Agent at the University of Florida IFAS Extension in Seminole County. Do you want more butterflies in your landscape? Butterflies are such a fantastic addition to any patio, garden, or large acreage. We all need to think about ways that we can support them in our environment. One easy way to do that is a butterfly container garden. Butterfly container gardens are a great addition to any patio or, or garden, and they're simply just a pot with some good soil that has some slow-release fertilizers in there and very specific species of plants. These plants that we have added to our butterfly container gardens are not only gonna support the adult butterflies that we all love so much, but they're also gonna support the caterpillars, which are the younger stages of the, of the butterfly life cycle. We wanna supply both host plants and nectar plants in our butterfly landscapes or butterfly container gardens to be able to attract and sustain butterflies in our landscape. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that today. So if you wanna make your own butterfly container garden, you'll need just a few things to, to do it. You're gonna to wanna to start off by finding what we call larval host species. These are plants that are gonna support the caterpillars. It's where the adult caterpillars are gonna actually lay their eggs. So when those caterpillars come to life, they're actually gonna eat the leaves of these plants. So a few that I have here are parsley. I also have, this is passion vine or maypop, passion flower. This one is a native, it's Passiflora incarnata, and it has a purple flower that hasn't yet opened as it's morning. But they'll actually, the golf flitieries use this as a host plant. We also have milkweed. There's many species of milkweed. What I have here is the tropical milkweed, which is okay to use. You do wanna cut it back in the winter if you're in central and north Florida so that the, the butterflies will continue their migration pattern. This is where, again, the butterflies, the adult butterflies are gonna lay their eggs and then you will have caterpillars eating most of the vegetation of your larval host species. Then what you wanna look for is the beautiful flowers, right? This is what we all wanna incorporate into our gardens. Lots of color, so here I have yellows and pinks. Um, this echinacea is gonna become purple. And this is where the adult butterflies are gonna get their nectar. So that's the primary source of food that they have and rely on. So you can choose many species. What I have here is bush daisy. This you could find at a common box store. Pentas, they come in many colors, pink, red, white. So you can choose the one that, that you like best for your patio or garden. We have lantana. Lantana, you just wanna be sure to not choose the, in, the invasive type of lantana. So this is a sterile variety of lantana, which isn't gonna harm our natural areas. And um, some dill. So when this dill actually, I can use it in my kitchen, but when this dill actually blooms, it's gonna be a great umble flower, which is just really like an umbrella flower um, for those butterflies, those adult butterflies. And of course we have our pot. I love turquoise, so I went ahead and got the turquoise pot and some potting soil. So some that I have here in my garden are this salvia or red uh, sage. We have our dune sunflower. And again, these plants are gonna have a lot of nectar and pollen for our pollinators. So each one of these little black dots in here are actually a different flower. And so each one has a reward for that pollinator butterfly. Biden's alba is the white one here. Biden's actually is a common weed in our landscapes and it can be a really great pollinator plant. So consider maybe leaving a few when you're doing your butterfly garden or your container garden. Another one I have here is bergamot or monarda or spotted horseman. It has lots of names. The scientific name is monarda and this is a powerhouse for many of our pollinators. Butterflies, various types of bees and wasp species really love this plant. And so I really recommend our bergamot or wild horseman um, for one of your containers. And then finally, we also have um, Rudbeckia or Black-Eyed Susan, and also our native porterweed. So these are gonna be really great additions to any landscape, 
and also your butterfly container garden. So I've added the soil to my pot. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my bigger plants. I'm gonna take them out of the pot. And it's really important that if you're getting plants from a local nursery or from your, your box store, that you kind of massage the roots. They've been in that pot for a little while. And so you wanna kind of loosen them up, allowing them to create new roots in, in your container. So I'm gonna kind of position them how I want them. Again, this is my bush daisy. Now I'm gonna add my penta. We're gonna kind of, again, start with massaging that soil, the roots, to be able to put them together there. Placing them how you'd like them. I'm gonna add in my lantana, as you can see on this one, the roots are starting to circle. And so we really do wanna to start to break those apart and allow the plant to create new roots. I'm gonna add a little bit more soil here. And of course our host plants, again, you can see the roots are needing to be broken away, broken up. And you can really do that no matter what you're planting. If it's a tree or a little herb, I'm gonna put in our dill. So you wanna make sure that they're full, but not you know too full. So everything is kind of getting enough sun and light. Maybe one more here. My little echinacea. So you really wanna be sure to look to see if your container has holes on the bottom or not. When you're working in outside in a patio or a landscape with your butterfly container garden, most of these are gonna want full sun and they are gonna want good drainage. So a few holes on the bottom of the pot is gonna allow for that water to percolate out. The bigger the pot that you have, the less watering it's gonna need. Those little pots are gonna tend to dry out quicker. So a nice big pot is gonna hold the water for longer. To finish it off, you wanna make sure to have enough soil distributed throughout your pot. It's looking pretty good. Our final step is to go ahead and place the container where you want it and water it. We're gonna go ahead and use water from our rain barrel. The first time you water it, you wanna make sure that you really saturate it so that all of your soil is gonna get in place. If you're watering at night, you wanna be sure to not get water on the leaves. That'll create a, an environment that's good for fungus. And so it's best to water in the morning or go ahead and water just at the root zone if you're watering at night. So I hope you have all the tools you need and the knowledge to create your butterfly container garden for your patio or landscape. Attracting wildlife is a really important part of the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program. So I encourage you to learn more by selecting books from the UF IFAS Extension Bookstore or your local library to learn about these great native plant and Florida friendly species and the native butterflies that are gonna be attracted. To learn more about our classes and workshops that are both virtual and in person, visit our Facebook page at UF IFAS Extension Seminole County. We look forward to seeing you at a future event and workshop. I'm Tina McIntyre.